Hello everyone. Uh, I'm uh, I'm Jun. Today I'm going to present our talk on program synthesis by type guided abstraction refinement. I will begin the talk by introducing the problem we are solving with an example, and then I will show the challenge when we have polymorphism in them. Next, I will move on to some technical details of our solution, and at last, uh, I will cover some uh, more supportive feature in our implementation. Oh, sorry. What? Uh, let me hold it. So now uh, let's see an example first. <coughs> Suppose you are provided with a list of optional values, which may or may not contain a value in it. For example, here is a list of optional values. And you are required to produce uh, the first non-empty value in this list. So for this example, the desired solution should be character B. It is also possible that you are given a list of all nothings in it. Then we also give you a default value for you. If you have a list of all nothings, you are required to produce uh, the default value. So uh, because we are targeting the functional programming language, let's describe this uh, task into a type signature. Say if you have a, uh, a default value of type A and a list of optional values of type list maybe A, and the desired result should have type A. Now, with the type signature on hand, some programs may think, oh, is there any library function did this for me already? So let's check. For example, Haskell programmers will use Hugo to find some API for us. If we type this signature into Hugo, we will see that, unfortunately, there is no single library function did this task for us. So that's why we need Hugo Plus. Hugo Plus searches for composition of library function, functions for you. Uh, if we type the same query into Hugo Plus, we'll find in several seconds it returns some results for us. And for this specific example, our desired solution lies at uh, rank 5. Now let me show you how this solution works on our example. Here is the solution. The same previous example. First, uh, the function cat maybe gets the non-empty values from this list. We get a new list here of, of characters. Then list to maybe extracts the first element in the list and put it back into just. Then another function from maybe looks at that optional value. If it's a just, returns the value in the just. Otherwise, it returns the default value for us. So this is how this solution works. But the question is, we have the query, and we know what we want, but how can we find it from the components? That's why we need program synthesis. Um, before I introduce our solution, uh, let me introduce a previous work called SciPad for you first, because our work is built upon it. SciPad is a type-directed component-based program synthesizer. It accepts type query and components. After some searching, it will return the result program to you. And uh, SciPad uses a special graph called PetriNet to represent its search space. Now let me introduce how we can construct a uh, PetriNet from the component set. Suppose you have a component named from maybe, which has a type signature A to maybe A to A. And uh, each component is a transition in the PetriNet. For example, from maybe here is a transition. And for its argument types, we build new node for each type. And these nodes are called places in the PetriNet. And we connect these places with the transition, uh, with the incoming edges to the transition. For the return type of the component, we connect an outgoing edges from the transition to the type. And each place in the PetriNet will have zero or more tokens in it. Suppose we have one token in each of these uh, two types here, two places here. We say the transition from maybe is fired if it consumes both of the tokens from its incoming places and produce a new one into its, uh, into its outgoing place. And for now, we find there is no token left in maybe A. So if we want to fire this transition again, 
it cannot be fired because one of its incoming plates does not have token to be consumed. Following the same style, we are able to add a lot of com uh, components into, uh, into the PatchNet and get such a graph. Now our task is to find a path in this graph and it will give a uh, corresponds to some program we want. So before we find a path, we first uh, assign tokens to the argument types of our type query. In our example, the argument types would be A and list maybe A. And next, uh, our goal is to move these tokens such that we only have uh, one token left uh, in the return type of our query. In our example, it would be only one token left in the place A, and there is no token in the other places. Currently, because there is one token in the list maybe A, so this state cannot be accepted. We need to fire some transitions to consume that token. So let me show you how to do that. First, we can fire the transition cat maybe. Move the token from list to maybe to list of A. Next, we fire the transition list to maybe. Consume the token in list of A and produce one in maybe A. And next, we consume the token uh, uh, in, place, uh, in types A and maybe A by firing the transition from maybe and produce one back into A. Here, there is only one token in the, in the return type of the query, and we find the path. It gives us such a solution. This is what we want, right? It seems this previous work already solves this, prob uh, solves this problem for us, but actually it's not, because we have polymorphism. We, our component can be polymorphic. Let me show you why. First, uh, I have cheated when I try to build this patchnet because I only add one instance of this from maybe in it. It's uh, actually, this from maybe is a polymorphic function. The type variable alpha in it can be substituted into any type, but I only add the, this one instance into it. And we have to add all the possible instantiations into the patchnet. Otherwise, our search will be incomplete. So let's try to add all of them. We start by substitute that alpha by type A, and we will get such an instance. And this, uh, this, is, uh, this has been shown in previous slides. And, but uh, with this inst uh, instantiation, we get a new type, maybe A. We can substitute alpha by this maybe A again. We get another instantiation. But it also brings another new type. We substitute again, again, and again. We'll get an infinite chain here. Uh, actually, all the function, uh, all the components in my previous patchnet are all polymorphic. If we try to add all the instances of them into the patchnet, we will find our graph grows larger and larger, and it turns out to be an infinite graph. So our approach aims to turn this infinite graph into a finite one, such that we can uh, benefit the, our search. So how can we do that? Our solution is called Type Guided Abstraction Refinement, which is abbreviated as TIGER. Let me first uh, introduce how do we do the abstraction over types. Suppose you have these many concrete types, and our definition for abstract types are types with fresh type variables, or say types with unification variables. For example, in a very coarse level, we can abstract these concrete types as one abstract type tau. If we do a little more finer, we can uh, abstract list of A, list of list of A, and list of maybe A into list of tau. Similarly, maybe A, maybe, maybe A will be abstracted as maybe tau. And we will find that some of these concrete types may have different levels of abstractions. For example, maybe A can be abstracted as maybe tau, and can also be abstracted as tau. OK. Now, when we ha have abstract types, I say I can turn this infinite graph into a finite one by if we only keep the types in our type query, which is A and list maybe A, and collapse all the other types into one single abstract type, tau. And our patchnet will shrink like this. Uh, after some rerouting of the transitions, we'll get such a patchnet. It is much smaller than the previous one, right? Um, but although it is small, we uh, I will show you that it still contains this desired solution in it. By first, we can fire the transition cat maybe and produce one new token into tau. Next, we consume the token in tau 
by list to maybe and produce back one's token. Next, we fire the transition from maybe by consume tokens in tau and a and produce back one token. Now we get a pass in the patronet. Does it solve all the problem? If you are familiar with patronet, you will find that uh, there is actually a shorter path in this patronet, right? After we fire the transition cat maybe is, we have one token in tau. You can directly fire the transition from maybe here by consuming the tokens, produce one into A. Now we get another solution, which is from maybe D cat maybe is access. Does it, uh, is it a valid solution to us? Actually, it's not, because it does not type check against our type query. Let me do the type checking for you. First, we know access has type list maybe A. And cat maybe is this polymorphic type. After some type checking, we know that this node has type list of A. We also know the default value has type A. And now we need to apply these two arguments to from maybe. So we try to unify them with the arguments of from maybe. We will soon find that we cannot do that because list of, list of A does not unify with maybe alpha. We have a type error here. So if we think about why we get this, because we are uh, we expect a maybe A there, but actually we give it a list of A. But in our abstraction, list of A and maybe A are abstracted as in, uh, into one single abstract type. That's why we get this spurious program. Okay, so our next step is to refine our abstraction so that we can distinguish these two types. Uh, let me first introduce the overall uh, workflow of our Tiger algorithm. We first pick an initial abstraction, and we build an abstract patronet as for path in it. If the path type, uh, does not type check, we know that our uh, abstraction is too coarse. We need to refine it. So we build a new patronet, ask for a path again, again, until we find a type check the program in it. If there is no path find, then the the query cannot be solved with these components. Okay, so now let me introduce how to do the refinement. As I have said, because we abstract list of A and maybe A into one abstract type, so uh, we need to add some new abstract types into our abstraction such that this abstract type distinguishes these two types. For example, we can pick a list of tau where it only includes list of A but does not include maybe A. Now, if we add this new type into our patronet and reroute all the edges and transitions, we get a larger patronet here. And this patronet holds on two <coughs> properties. First, it rejects the spurious program for us. Although we can still fire the transition cat maybe by consuming a token in list of maybe A and produce one in list, a, list of tau, but when we try to fire the from transition from maybe, we will find one of its, uh, it cannot be fired because one of its incoming place does not have token to be consumed. And the second property is it still contains our desired solution because we can first fire the transition cat maybe. Then we can consume the token in list of tau and produce new one into tau. Then we can fire the transition from maybe by consume tokens in A and tau and produce back into A. Now, this is generally how our algorithm works. First, uh, get a patch in the abstract patch in it. Then if we get a spurious path in it, we will refine our abstraction and repeat this process again until we find a type check the program for us. Okay, so let's see how we evaluate our, <coughs> our algorithm. Uh, we evaluate our uh, Tiger algorithm on 12 Haskell library uh, modules, which include 291 components in it. And we collect our benchmarks from three sources. First, we extract the 24 benchmarks from Google uh, server log. Uh, and we also collect uh, six benchmarks from Stack Overflow and curate uh, 14 benchmarks by ourselves because all the Google benchmarks are too easy to solve and we do not have the user solution to those benchmarks. So Tiger works pretty well on these benchmarks. It solves 30, uh, 34 out of 44 benchmarks. But we observe that because uh, once we get a spurious program, uh, we, uh, Tiger is forced uh, to uh, do the refinement and bring, introduce new types into the patronet. 
So the puppy net grows larger and larger. It slows down the search. So we turn to a simpler strategy where we pick, uh, we, where we pick the initial value based on the query type, and we do not do the refinement. If we get a spurious program, we just ask the solver for more programs for us until we find the correct one. And this strategy manages to solve more benchmarks for us. Um, but when we look at the solved benchmarks, most of them are easy ones. They do not work well on hard queries. So we developed uh, another strategy. Uh, for example, this query, it has uh, no refinement times out on this query because uh, it has a solution at depth four. And our time out setting is 60 seconds. So it, can, uh, it does not work well on hard queries. So we developed another strategy, which balance between the no refinement and always do the refinement. We do a bounded number of, refine of refinements. Uh, and this strategy solves the most benchmarks, and it can also solve our previous hard query only in two seconds. OK, uh, and in the last part, I will introduce some more features in our implementation. Um, first, we, uh, on top of the polymorphism, we support more advanced Haskell features, like high order functions and type classes. And we also use some techniques to figure out uh, interesting solutions. <coughs> For example, here I present one solution that will always return the first argument with, without actually using the second one. Uh, and that's all. Thank you, and I'm happy to take questions. We have time for a few questions. Uh, hi, that's very interesting. Um, I, so, uh, I was wondering when you refine tau to like list of tau and maybe tau, are you able to abstract over the like the higher rank uh, types there um, and abstract it to like a tau of tau prime or? Uh, or do you only abstract like with a uh, concrete higher rank type on the outside? Like I'm curious if you could find something like a uh, traversable function where instead of list or maybe it was any traversable functor on the outside. Uh, sorry, could, 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 could you rephrase the question again? I, um, I, I'm not sure I understand it. So, so when you uh, refine your abstraction from like tau to list of tau uh -huh. and maybe tau, could you refine it to like any functor of tau, or functor of tau? Or uh, you mean higher kinded? Yeah, yeah. Types. Uh, uh, in this published work, we do not include it, but uh, in our current uh, project, we are adding that higher kinded type variables into it. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker, would you please set up? Uh, in the meanwhile, I think the speaker. Um, Malavika, yeah. Could you set up? So you had a question. Uh, so, a uh, thing that I'm not understanding is that um, petri nets, in which once you take a transition, they remove the token from the previous spot, would seem to prevent you from creating programs that use, say, its argument twice. Um, however. I saw an example where you did use the argument twice, so I, I'm not sure how it's consistent with your PetriNet model. Right. Uh, for simplicity, in my presentation, I didn't include uh, a special transition called copy transition. We can copy the argument types. For I see. Example, yeah, we can. Uh, it, that transition can uh, consume one token in some type and produce two tokens back. So, if you can do that, though, my question is, why is a PetriNet the right model? Like, why have the tokens at all? Why not just color, say, the nodes that you can reach? Uh, I don't understand why you made that choice. Uh, passionate, uh, we, we, without the, we, without the copy transition, passionate models the, the linear type for us, right? And right. every argument can only be used once. And with, uh, with the copy transition, and also another one, uh, called discard transition, which can discard some uh, uh, types for us, then it's it's not a 
substructural. Well, maybe I'll ask you afterwards. But it, but it seems yeah. like you're starting with a, a linear type system, sort of, and then you're adding, uh, you know, contraction and weakening. Uh, but you have all this machinery for t keeping track of the numbers of things, and I'm, I'm surprised by yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I think we can talk offline. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Thank this is a very good, good question. Thank you.